The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the 12 went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, earlier this week, um, I found this story um, that I read and I shared it with Father Bob, and we both um, had to take some time with it. And uh, it really kind of pulled at our heartstrings and uh, really challenged not only us, but I think anybody who hears the story. Uh, I'm going to share the story with you tonight. And, uh, and I, I'm just going to ask you to uh, think about that, th this story this week. And so the, the story goes like this. One Monday morning, the traffic light turned red during rush hour. A young lady was first in her lane. The light turned green, but the lady was busy texting on her phone and did not notice when the light changed. And before she noticed, the light turned green. A man was in a truck be right behind her. He began to honk and cursed, and he put his hand out the window showed his middle finger, and uh, the officer who was behind him in his car saw this happen. And he got out of his car and asked the man to get out of his truck and come with him. He told the man he was arrested and handcuffed him and put him in the back of his police car and began to do a background check on the man. After three quarters of an hour, the officer released him, but the man would not go. He wanted to know why he was arrested, because according to his judgment, the young lady in front of him busy texting instead of focusing on her driving should have been the one under arrest and not him. So the police officer once again said, you are free. The man said, no, you must tell me why you arrested me. The police officer began to explain. He said, first of all, you did nothing wrong. But I was right behind you. I saw your truck. I saw your rosary beads and your cross hanging on the rearview mirror inside your truck. I saw the bumper sticker, 40 day walk for life on your bumper. I saw the scripture quote, John 10.10, 10, and I know that scripture quote. He said, I have come so that you may have life and have it to the fullest. 
And then I saw, I love Jesus. As soon as you began to honk your horn, curse, and show your middle finger, I said to myself, this truck must be stolen. We laugh too, but that's a perfect story. That's a perfect story. We have to ask ourselves, could we be arrested for some of our words and actions? Probably not, probably not. But the story might ask us to look at our own life, how we are living as Christian Catholics, how we are showing the world that we are disciples following Jesus. Now, would people uh, that you work with know that you're Christian by your words and your actions? Would your grandchildren know that you're Christian, and even your children. They say, oh yeah, they go to church every Sunday, but what do they do during the week? Um, people you work with, do they know that you're a follower of Jesus? Jesus in today's gospel tells us to go out to others in total humility and openness, to share God's love and mercy with our world. Often, I think we miss the boat. And I talk about myself there too. I walk around with a collar on most of the time. What do I, how do I act in front of people? What do I say that might hurt people? I was just, I stopped at the European market on the way here, no collar on, and I paid for what I bought. And I said, thank you very much, have a good day. And she said to me, that was the first time somebody said that to me all day, sir. Thank you very much. Just by a few words, you make a difference in people's lives. Think about it. We who represent Christ and his church. Do our actions and words reflect Christ? We have to stop and think about that. You know, we may belong to prayer groups. We might come to the Eucharist every day uh, and receive Jesus, which challenges us as we come here today go out and be the body of Christ to the world. That's what amen means. I will. But often, we are like the man in the truck. Friends, you and I are being asked to be the face of Christ in our world today. And I think that it's probably more important to do that than any other time in history. Our world is a mess. Leaders who say they're Christian, Catholic, don't live out their faith. They're afraid to. So in my reflection and Father Bob's reflection this week, we, we both thought of the uh, fruits of the Holy Spirit. Among them is kindness joy, goodness, love. Those are magnets that attract people to Christ. When they see that in our life, love is the only way to live as a disciple of Jesus. So I just ask you this week, just take some time thinking about that man in the truck as you go about your daily life? How do you reflect Jesus? 
How are you magnets for Christ?